Welcome to this rapid revision video on medieval prevention of disease. That's right, prevention. Stopping it happening in the first place rather than trying to treat it once it had. I've got a separate video on the treatments. Just like when we looked at the causes of disease that were believed in medieval times, this could be divided between the supernatural and the natural. As with both the theories of the cause of disease and the treatments of disease, people tried to prevent illness in both natural and supernatural ways. Here, supernatural literally means beyond nature. These theories are often spiritual or religious and rely on an element of faith, or maybe just the belief in spirits. Natural theories, on the other hand, were ideas based upon what could be observed in the real world, or just simple common sense. These are often more scientific, but they were not always correct. If the cause was believed to be supernatural, the method of prevention usually was too, and the same applied to natural theories. We're going to kick off by looking at some religious prevention methods. There's going to be quite a lot of information on this screen, so you might want to pause it at the end and make your own notes at your own pace, but let's go through it. God's actions and punishments were often used to explain misfortune, and that included disease. Some religious actions were intended to treat disease, but we're going to focus here on prevention. Prayer. Just like the treatments, this was used to ward off disease and to show faith in God to keep a person well, or one of their friends. Prayers might be offered to a particular saint associated with the disease. There was also confessing sins. This was done to try and gain God's forgiveness and to avoid punishment with disease. And also there were indulgences and tithes. Those who could afford to would make offerings to the church in both property and or money. All, though, paid the tithe, which was a 10% tax on the income or produce that people produced. This was often done to get an easier path into heaven, but it was believed to keep God from punishing the faithful too, or possibly to gain forgiveness for the sinful. A really specific example of a religious pain, uh, prevention, though, is the flagellants. And you can see these pictured at the top of the screen here. At times of crisis, such as in the Black Death, people believed that whipping themselves publicly might show God how sorry they were and how they were suffering for the world's sins in the hope of avoiding the plague, which they judged to be God's punishment. These are all quite Christian ideas, but we're going to look more general, generally at the idea of spiritual prevention next. Spiritual prevention was often Christian too, but actually sometimes it harked back to much more ancient ideas, which can seem a little bit more mysterious to us. But let's have a look at some examples. The church was keen to discourage some spiritual ideas which did, which did not fit into the mainstream church teachings, but many peoples and communities clung to other spiritual ideas which might have been thousands of years old. Many of these might have had their origins in much more ancient times, even in the Roman period, or perhaps even in prehistory. We can't really be sure with a lot of them. One of these was charms and amulets. These might be worn openly or hidden for good luck and to ward off evil. A possible example of this can be seen in the top. Also, we have witches marks. An example can be seen in the middle. These were geometric patterns which might be carved into stone or wooden beams. These were thought to ward off court curses and evil spirits. Some can still be found in medieval houses or even occasionally in churches, which is interesting given that they're not particularly Christian in their character. A friend of mine actually has an old medieval house which is converted from a longhouse and they still have a carved wooden witch's post right next to where the fireplace used to be. Astrology is another idea. Belief in astrology influenced people's behaviour and this behaviour was believed to be able to prevent disease. Even physicians might consult a star chart when giving health advice or deciding a treatment. So something that was considered a spiritual or supernatural idea back then was actually considered pseudoscientific at the time. But what about natural preventions? Here are some ideas. And remember, although they might seem like common sense, they're rarely correct. Natural or rational prevention was often intended to either avoid miasma or to keep the humours in balance. Physicians would attempt to balance the humours. This might include the use of Galen's theory of opposites. Bloodletting based upon phlebotomy charts was not just used as a treatment. Healthy people would be voluntarily bled in the belief that it kept them well as well, perhaps on a weekly basis. Sweet smells as well were also used for prevention. Fear of bad air or miasmas led people to value sweet or strong smells to drive away the bad air. Smoke from fires did this, as did carrying flowers or sweet herbs to keep the air smelling better. People wore a pomander on the belt, one is pictured here, or a locket filled with strong, pleasant smelling herbs. There were other ideas too. Some prevention was simply common sense, like basic hygiene. 
People understood the importance of hygiene, even if they didn't know about why dirt caused disease. There were hefty fines for littering the streets in many English towns, and foul-smelling rubbish and dung was raked up. People took care to keep floors swept at home too. Bathing and sweating. Despite the myth, bathing was actually common in medieval times, and public baths like the one pictured were reasonably common too. People understood the importance of personal hygiene and believed that bathing discouraged harmful miasmas and sweating helped to balance the humours. But there's another example too, the so-called regimen sanitatis, which might be considered both a religious and natural idea. The regimen sanitatis was a rule of clean living and these were the main rules. People were advised to take moderate exercise, to not overeat, to adjust their diet to the amount of exercise that they did, and to make sure that they got enough sleep, but at the same time, not too much. People were also encouraged to avoid stress and to keep clean with regular bathing. Pretty sure we'd recognize most of those things as good examples of self-care even today. They were also encouraged to breathe clean eastern or northern air. This was linked to the theory of miasma. They were encouraged to live away from their animals and not too close to the ground floor. It's worth bearing in mind that many medieval longhouses of peasants would house the animals and the people within one large room. Admittedly, they'd try and keep the animals down one end, but it was hardly a healthy arrangement. People were also told to avoid excessive cold, heat, dryness or humidity. Have a think about that. Four different things there. Yep, it's linked to the theory of the four humours and trying to keep them in balance. They were told to stay on friendly terms with their neighbours and also not to have too much sex both of which may have been linked to the idea of avoiding sin. They were also told to avoid barking dogs, drunks and bandits, since these can cause anxiety and therefore disease. They might just be a good idea anyway. So this is a mixture of both the religious and natural, but it's mostly about the natural, and a lot of it is just good advice even today. Some final points then. Medieval understanding of the cause of disease divided between the supernatural and the natural. Prevention followed the same logic. Supernatural prevention was largely Christian in the British Isles and was focused on prayer, confession and paying for indulgences or paying the tithe, a little bit like bribing the church. And don't forget the specific example of the flagellants who tried to punish themselves so that God would not punish them in return. Also, more traditional spiritual ideas like amulets, charms and witch marks tried to keep people safe from evil spirits. And star charts and astrology were basically considered scientific at the time, but we'd understand them as supernatural. Natural prevention followed the following. Bloodletting was used to try and keep people healthy rather than just as a treatment. Avoiding miasmas was considered important, for example, by carrying a pomander of fresh herbs. Hygiene and cleaning the home and street wasn't just good common sense. It also worked to keep people healthy, although they didn't know how. Bathing and personal hygiene were both considered very important, and the regimen sanitatis provided a framework of rules for healthy living. While some ideas would have been of little use, many of the natural preventions were common sense ideas for well-being, even if people didn't un always understand the underlying reason why. That's the end of this rapid revision video. I hope it's been helpful to you, and if it has, please drop the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. But that's all for now. I'll see you another time. Goodbye.